Welcome to the second episode of Ask Your Excel Question. In this video, we will learn how we can calculate the dates of a specific month. For example, if we enter the year 2018 and then we can select a specific month, then you can see that the dates in that month are automatically calculated. So in this video, I will explain how we can write the formulas in order to implement this. There will also be a link in the video description to a blog post which will have step-by-step -step instructions with screenshots as well. And if you have any other questions that you would like me to create a video for, please post them in the comments below. I will do my best to create a video that will provide a solution to your question. Now let's get started. So now we have a brand new worksheet and a workbook. And the first thing we will do is to create the places where we will receive the input for the year and the month. So for the year, I'm going to use this cell. Let's say I type in 2018 and I'm going to name the cell. So you can name a specific cell by just typing in the name box, which is this one. And I'm going to type in I underscore year, I standing for input and Similarly, we will do uh, the month here. And for month, I'm going to type the month name. I prefer to use the month name instead of the number of the month, like uh, one for January, because uh, I think it's a little bit uh, of a better experience if the user gets to choose the month uh, as we usually refer to, January, February. So I'm gonna use the name of the month and we will call the cell I underscore MTH is the input for the month. So the next thing we will do is to just highlight these and then um, give a different color. And I'm just gonna put some standard borders so that it's clear that this is uh, these are the cells where we will provide input. Now, we want this month to be uh, something that the user can choose from a drop-down list which month they are interested in. The year is straightforward. We can just type in the year as anything directly, but the month we want to see if we can put a, a drop-down list for the user to choose from. So what we will do in order to implement that is we need a list of month names. And I like to create these type of things in a separate sheet. So I create a new sheet and then I'm gonna just type in January. Once we type a month name, and then you can go to the bottom right corner and then click and drag and you will notice that Excel automatically will fill in the names for uh, of the months of the year. And so this is very, very handy. So we don't have to type all of them. Just use the feature that is inbuilt in Excel. Now, once I have all these 12 months selected, I'm going to name this list as L underscore MTHS standing for a list of months. So these names are something that you can choose whatever you prefer to use. I'm just using those names to refer to this group of cells. So now that we have the name um, of the list of months, now what we can do is to go back to our previous sheet and now we will implement the drop down validation here. And this is something that we have covered in a previous video. I will put a link to that one. So I'm not gonna go and explain in detail what this is doing, but we now have a drop down list of month names and I can choose. So that's pretty straightforward. Now I'm going to type in a formula because we're going to create the uh, dates in this month here from C5. So since we'll have 31 days, so it'll go all the way to C35. So I'm going to just highlight them in a different color. So we can see, for example, where those dates are. There you go. Okay, so this is where the dates are gonna be. Now, the first thing we're going to do is to write a formula to pick the first date of the month. So I'm gonna type in here in cell C5, I'm gonna type in um, date function. So this function needs the year, month, and day as inputs. So the first thing, it's pretty straightforward because this is going to be our year, which is the cell B1, or in other words, since we named the cell, we'll just type I underscore YR, or you can also use the mouse to click and select them. The month is a little bit tricky because the month, uh, we need to provide a number of the month. So since we don't have the numbers 
uh, as the input. We have the name as the input. So I'm gonna calculate the calculate the month number by just doing a simple match function. So the way this works is that match is looking for January and it goes and searches in the L underscore months. L underscore months is nothing but all of these values, right? So when January comes in, it knows that January is the first entry in this list. February is the second entry. So it will, it will return the location or the position of the value in that list. And so that's what we want. And so um, in order to see the, the values, I pressed F9. And when I don't want to see it immediately, I would press, press Control Z and this will undo and show me the actual formula. Now, I got the year and the month. The date is going to be always the month begins with the first day, so I'm just gonna put one, and I'm gonna hit enter. I can't see the value because the column width is not wide enough, so I'm gonna make it a little bit wider. And now you can see that this is January 1st, 2017, and uh, depending on you know your Excel um, language and the location region, you might use differently, but what this, for me, it is e month, day, and then the year. So that's how Excel uh, puts by default. This is the US installation of Excel. Okay, now the first date is great. So now if I change this to February, it will say February 1st, 2017. If I do 2018, it'll do this. So just to make the display clearer for those who are following from where you use a different date format. I'm gonna change the date format quickly. I like to use a date format which is day, month, year. Or you could do Feb 1st, for example, MMM, DD, YYYY. So one of these options, so let's, let's use this option, for example. So this will be clear. So this is Feb 1st, 2018. May 1st, 2018. So the first day, we already have it. Now what we need to do is to enter the formula for the second and all these other dates because they have to be um, the second and the third and everything. There are many ways to do this, just like everything in Excel, there are many, many different ways to do it. I'm gonna use a formula to say, just take the previous date and then add one to it. And then I'm going to just drag this to extend all the way through. So now it'll calculate from May 1st to May 31st. Pretty straightforward. Uh, all it is doing is that taking the previous date, adding one more date to it. Since Excel treats the dates as numbers, this is very straightforward. It just adds one to it, and then it, we get the next date. Where this will be tricky is, let's say I choose February, or um, any month where we don't have 31 days, for example here, you will see that the last three days are actually not February, it's in March. So since we don't have any logic to make, restrict the dates to the same month, it will display 31 days regardless. So what we will do is to slightly make this formula a little bit more um, enhanced with the logic. So I'm gonna use if, let's say C5 plus one is greater than the end of the month of this cell, I'm going to put dollars to lock my reference and I will have uh, a link to another video where I talk about absolute versus uh, relative references. But in this case, we want to know is the date greater than the end of this month's date, then I don't want you to display the number. If it is not greater than the end of the month, then I want you to display the number. So this is basically what that formula is doing. and. Once we do this, the way I do um, apply the formula to all the cells is to select everything that we want to apply. And then I go into the edit mode inside the cell, control enter, control enter will apply the same formula to all these cells. Now, you will notice that there are a couple of cells with the errors. And in order to fix that, what I'm going to do is to do an if error if error, that means if this if this calculation results in an error, then don't display anything. Don't display that there is an error. 
If not, it'll display the correct value. So that there we have it. So this is how we can quickly generate uh, a calendar or dates in a month. And so this will work regardless of how many dates there are. So if I choose March, I can see all the 31 days. If I choose June, it'll display all the 30 days and the last date will be blank. And usually I like to apply all the cells with the same formula, but in this case, remember that we have a different formula for the first date and different formula for all the other dates. So we have two different formulas. Um, I like to keep them all the same because it helps in testing and maintenance because otherwise we may not remember that you know the formula is different from this cell to this cell. We can implement that, however, that will make the formula longer and a little bit more advanced. So we will cover that in a, in a separate video. For now, just to recap, we receive the input from the user in the year and the month. We made sure that the month can be a month name and the user can choose from a dropdown. We also created the two formulas, so one to find the first date and one to find the rest of the dates in the month. And so I hope this video was useful. If you like the video, please post your feedback in the comments. And then if you have any suggestions to for a future video on any question in Excel, please post them in the comments and I will do my best to answer. If you have not subscribed to the channel yet, please do subscribe to be notified of our future videos around Excel and Excel templates. Thank you very much for watching.